Hey, hi everybody, Dan John here from danjohnuniversity.com. This is episode number 93 of the podcast, and I'm as amazed as you are that we've kept it going this long. Hey, listen, uh, if you want to be a, a fan of what we do, Patreon at Coach Dan John, or just sign up for danjohnuniversity.com and you'll get everything. Uh, the rates are still really good, and uh, I can't do better than the workout generator. So before I begin today, I want to talk about this little adventure I had this weekend. Uh, I went down to our state meet and I lifted again. Uh, I would have won the 102 kilo open class now, I'm not you know, because everybody else bombed, but I did win my division in the Masters again. Now the reason I bring this up is because you know somebody said this is the 42nd annual uh, state weightlifting meet, and we all go, "Wow, that's amazing." Well, at the first state weightlifting meet, I won best lifter. And there's a funny picture of a woman giving me the medal and she's holding a baby. Let's follow this. There's a woman holding a baby, giving me a medal. That baby's child is on my weightlifting team. So a lot of things happen over 43s. Now, obviously, I don't lift like I did in the first, oh, I don't know, first 10, 20, 30 of them. And, uh, and I, made a, I made kind of an odd mistake. It's, it's not a bad one. But I, I lost 30 pounds uh, body weight to get ready for this meet. Now, that uh, I lost about 13, almost 14 kilograms. And uh, when I weighed in at 100 kilos, 220, I, I had a, a about five-pound uh, uh, buffer. I, I, I thought about something. I haven't lifted this light since probably 1980, and it's nice. Uh, my age now, 63, sneaking up on 64 basically any hour from now. That body weight drop is far more important than the weight I've put overhead. Interesting thing I learned, uh, I struggled with a lot of my lifts and I thought about it and I, I came home, I am gonna buy some new equipment. My weightlifting boots uh, don't reflect the way I lift now. And uh, it's not as technical as it sounds. And, and honestly, I'll, I'll lose most people because it is kind of boring, but, and I need to uh, rethink my overhead strength at my new body weight, and my goal, of course, is to get down to the next lower weight class, uh, which is 96K, which is just barely over uh, 210 pounds. You know, I think this is important, and uh, I share with all of my listeners everything I do, and none of it is that fancy. Uh, uh, I probably will do a major uh, review of what I call easy strength for fat loss with Olympic lifting, the, the worst name in the history of names. Uh, but I, I lifted well. Uh, I broke all the state records uh, in my weight class because when you hit a certain age, there's not many of us left. So you get to break them all. Yay. <laughs> but I, I will lift better in a couple of weeks. I'll, I'll probably lift at another meet. And uh, here we go. Uh, it's an honor, as always, a step on the platform. You know, my coach, Dave Turner, was there and he comes out to help me on every lift. And uh, we have great conversations. Um, and I, I get frustrated when I miss lifts, just like I did when I was five years old and 10 years old. So some things never change, but I still just love being on the platform. If you want to see uh, videos and pictures, I got some uh, up there on Instagram at Coach Dan John. Uh, I hope you enjoy. And now let's get to the questions, okay? Okay, so we have a question from Ray. Have not done swings for quite some time, but would like to start up again. <laughs> Pretty simple. Pick up a bell, swing it. I like the fact they work for power, and I like the hard style swing, which of course is what I believe in. In the past, to get power, I, I went too heavy for power, I believe. Anyway, thoughts on sets and reps, and how does one figure out percents? You don't figure out percents. I don't think you can figure out percents with... Uh, elite athletes who compete in powerlifting and Olympic lifting. Percents, man, uh, it takes a lot of time with the bar in Olympic lifting and powerlifting to figure out what your perceived exertion is for a 90%. Uh, when I first started Olympic lifting, you know, snatching like 200 pounds, you know, 180, I could do it, I could do it probably all afternoon. Uh, 190, I probably could have gotten a triple couple years later, I'm snatching 300. Well, 270 is a little different. They're both 90%, 180 and 270, both 90, but they're different worlds. So that's always tough. 
Uh, but let's continue. Though I did reps of just five as often as I believe research leans to keeping reps low for power. Is this the same for swings? Uh, I would only say, Ray, the only thing I can say in my experience, we have found that 10 is better. Now, remember that the swing is such a simple movement that a set of 10, boy, you know, a, a set of 10 heavy in the back squat might take you, well, I don't know, uh, it'll, it'll take a while. You know, your spotters will get bored, you know, they'll start checking, checking their Instagram account or whatever, you know. Uh, but a set of 10 swings is like, boom. I mean, let's, let's, let's just go through it mentally. Okay, set, go, boom, 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 boom. According to my internal clock, and I'm wired like a Vulcan, that was less than 10 seconds. Um, so, you know, even a set of 20, a 15, is still a very short, compact amount of time. Now, if you do a set of five, you're probably going to have a poor rep or two. If you're going to do a set of 10, you'll probably still have a poor rep or two, but you'll notice those last five. Well, generally, you don't. it takes most people a few reps to clean up their technique in the swing. Little things, the lockout especially, usually the, the, the hike past the legs between the thigh, the hands between the thighs. Um, those tend to be a little, uh, it takes a, a few reps. So the upside of going just a little bit more reps, Ray, uh, is that your crappy reps won't be nearly as important. Uh, I like your mind. If you've ever done a set of 10 with the 48 kilo, the beast, it is really eye-opening. We do it in one of our workouts. We take all 26 kettlebells and we put them out randomly in a row and do a set of 10 kettlebells at each. Now, if we drop one out, by the time you get through that once, that's 250 swings. That's a good workout. And I always put next to the 48k uh, a big drop down like uh, a 10 uh, so you you do the 48 and then you drop down to the 10 and when you start whipping that then you understand finally why swings can work so well to to build up your power because those sets with 10 with that lightweight is freakishly explosive i hope it helps uh remember ray i don't necessarily believe in percents with anything and kettlebells are even worse, so I like your idea, but just double the reps up to 10. And get back to me and see what you think. We have a question from Mahir. Mahir says, I saw your podcast with Pat, and you were talking about many guys working out in the gym without ever visibly changing their body composition. Yeah, uh, you'll see people who are very good about going to the gym, and you'll never see any changes. Uh, make fun of us throwers all you want, but one of the things you will see is we mess around with body composition a lot. Uh, it was always interesting at the end of a track season when I took my off season and watched my weight just drop off. Uh, and who knows? I mean, obviously, you know, I don't think it was all fat. But uh, yeah, uh, body composition is a funny thing. You'll go to gyms and you'll see this. The guy looked the exact same uh, <laughs> decade in and decade out. Uh, this summarized my life story and made me think about what I'm doing wrong and should and what should I do to achieve my goals when it comes to body composition, strength, and power. My question is, how can I stay with your principle, little and often, over the long haul, and also a follow a program that will visibly change body composition? I would like to be 75 kilos while looking uh, muscular and lean. I'm currently 73 kilos and very skinny fat. I'm also 42, if that makes a difference. Yeah, it does, yeah. Uh, so which program should I follow to stay healthy and change my body composition by doing little and often over the long haul? Well, Maher, I'm going to tell you from the heart. Uh, I think, first off, I think you're working too hard in the wrong place. Uh, skinny fat happens in the kitchen. Skinny fat happens in the kitchen. Uh, I, you know, I mean, I'm not bragging, but I just pulled off a, 30 pound uh, weight loss on the scale. And really all I did was add more kimchi, add more fermented foods and eat more vegetables because fat loss happens in the kitchen. Fat body composition happens in the kitchen. For workouts, Maher, I'd tell you this. Join Dan John University and do the workout generator. And I mean this. Uh, get the most basic program you can do three days a week, four days a week, five days a week. So when you get the generator open, it's going to ask you, what equipment do you have? How many days a week do you want to work out? I'm recommending three 
but four and five work out great on the generator too because there's all that um, internal natural variation you get from the generator. So focus more time and effort in what you eat. More vegetables, more uh, protein, vegetables, water. Th those should be your standbys. Uh, find your X, as one of my friends, Erica, points out all the time. My X, like most people's X, uh, X, as in what, what the thing that bothers you, that you got to chop out. You have to chop out, not me, you. Uh, for me, it was alcohol. Uh, yeah, I still drink, sure. Uh, but now I'm up to, like, uh, up to, <laughs> like, I was drinking a few, uh, a few drinks every other Friday night. And then I realized that every other Saturday morning, I didn't feel good, so... I cut that out, and now I will have an occasional beverage at a, at a meal, but it's never anything focused. That helped me. You've got to find what yours is. Um, generally, uh, don't drink your carbohydrate. Uh, don't drink your calories. Don't drink your calories. Don't drink your calories is usually good advice. And then the second thing is, if you really do have a weird craving, like the cravings I have for that food called Cheetos, or Fritos, too. Cheetos and Fritos, man. I just, th those are my crack cocaines. Uh, I just have to avoid uh, those kinds of things, and good things tend to happen. You know, Maher, I hope that helps. So, kitchen, workout generator. Thank you. We have a question from Michael, and this is going to be a hard question for me to answer because there's so many things that I don't like about this question. My son, Jack, is a competitive basketball player. He's 14 years old. Well, when you say competitive basketball player, uh, I met, uh, of course, you know, I, I worked with the NBA for a while, and uh, my favorite line of all time comes from Bill Walton. And somebody asked him why he didn't retire, and he said, it's the only place I can get a game. Um, so when you say your son's competitive basketball player, uh, I mean, as long as he's getting a salary, I, I will agree to help him any way you want. He is 14 years old and needs to get stronger to compete at this level. As you know, today's youth sports seasons seem to never end. Right. And that's why there's a real good chance no one in the league is going to play is ever going to make it very far because they're not, they're doing uh, sports specific training too, too young. Remember, Yuri Sadiq, world record holder in the hammer throw told me at lunch, at lunch, at lunch, what elite is. And that's someone who improves every single year. John Powell, world record holding the discus, adds in, yeah, and if you're not world class after single specialization in two to three years, you're not good enough. Tommy Kono said about the same thing. If you're not uh, world class in two or three years, this probably isn't for you. So part of the problem with early sports specialization is that the clock starts ticking. I mean, if you want your kid's clock to start, you want the, you know, you want a, a wall full of trophies that all say middle school, get them focused early. But if you want a wall full of trophies that are from division one or the pros, you might want to push it off. And I, I, Michael, I know I'm coming off as a jerk, but you're hitting me right in an area that I'm very sensitive about. Um, since today's use, seems to never end. He hasn't been able to train intensely with weights consistently for the past six months or so, even in COVID times. In June, July, August, he'll get some time off from basketball. So he's hoping to improve his strength, speed, and quickness during those months. What type of lifting do you recommend for him over those months? Well, I mean, in those three months, he should learn the Olympic lifts and he should learn the power lifts. And the learning will be everything he needs to know for strength. Um, also, should he lift in the morning and work on speed and agility in the afternoon? No. Uh, well, you're going to do it anyway. I don't think you should do it. I think you should. I think you should lift weights and then have some fun with his friends. Or is it better to lift one day and sprint the next? At 14, it doesn't matter. He he has so much recovery ability at 14 that he can do everything all day long, like I did at 14. And the one thing I never had at 14 when we we're playing all summer long. Is anybody coaching us? So we played baseball, we played basketball, we got at our at our neighborhood. We had track meets, which are hilarious. We just invented our own. Um, we did these weird uh, military base games because you know I was a military family, and yeah, I, uh, hide and go seek, hide and go seek, and the game tag 
might be the most important hunter-gatherer games you know. I hope, I hope your son Jack never has to play hide-and-go-seek. But if he ever is in a situation where he has to hide to save his life, the training in hide-and-go-seek will carry him over much better than agility drills. Uh, Michael, get him to lift weights, power lift, Olympic lift, learn the basics, learn the basic foundational exercises of the weight room. And, you know, there's a, there's a you know, <laughs> curl and tricep extension, leg extension, all that nonsense. But just get him in and have lift weights and, and make sure you sit down every day and make sure that you're not burning them out too early. I know what I'm saying is not nice. It's not popular. But boy, is it true. All those guys that were superstars when I was young, growing up in middle school and junior high, the bulk of them never even played uh, varsity sports. Or if they did, they were, they were the guys on the sidelines dinking around the whole time talking about middle school sports. So I, don't know, I know that's negative, but I, I'm sorry. Uh, let me know what you decide. Thank you. We have a question from Dave. I am currently working through easy strength and I'm loving the results. I finished the first 10 days and my numbers went up across the board. I'm about to start the next 10 days and I'm thinking about doing same but different approach. Um, gentle listeners, uh, so there's a couple ways to do it. And if you just go Google my name and look up the name Dan John, even easier strength, you'll notice I give you three options. He's asking about one of the three options. Personally, I think the best option is not change anything. Option two is what he's talking about, same but different. And let's go through what he thinks that is. Um, my question is, if I was to do overhead squats, overhead press, and waiter walks, do you think this would be too much overhead work and I should replace some of these with other movements? Well, I was not expecting that as the follow-up. Uh, overhead squat, overhead press, and waiter walk, yeah, that's a lot of volume overhead. Boy. That's a lot of volume overhead, but yeah, I mean, why not try it? You know, do it like you said, Dave, for two weeks. And if you just feel miserable, well, go to suitcase carries and front squats and bench. There you go. And you might find yourself feeling better on the more traditional hypertrophy movements because that's the nature of hypertrophy. But you'll probably notice more changes with all the overhead work. Uh, I'm really interested in seeing how this goes. Get back to me, okay, Dave? Thanks. Uh, Jeff asks us a question. I love reading, planning, and studying programs. Uh, dumbbells, kettlebells, barbell, TRX, etc. I get super excited about a program. Then after two weeks, boredom and tedium. Uh, yeah, Jeff, you're so unusual. Now, everybody has that problem, man. Question. Do you want... Do you see it beneficial or a problem... Uh, to kind of wing it. What I mean is, does it matter what I do on any given day as long as I stick with the push-pull, hinge-squat, carry mo movement pattern? Well, yeah, okay, you can wing it uh, in a program, too. Uh, and that's why I I'm such a big fan of the workout generator because there's all those built-in options in there. Like in the press, uh, the press, you can do single kettlebell, double kettlebell, vertical, you know, horizontal bench, you know, incline, option, option, option. Uh, right now, Jeff, and it should be maybe even finished by the time you hear this, but I'm working on a new uh, uh, course on my site about programming. Uh, so I'm giving you two good options. So you can do it the easy dummy proof way, which is to sign up and do the workout generator and, and thank you very much. Or you can wait a couple of weeks and follow up with the uh, with the new course on programming to get more details. But I think, like I think you're on the right track, and I've I've done it a little differently, same but different. Okay, uh, where you just pick a push, pull, hinge, squat, loaded carry. That would have to be about a three. If you're going serious at all, if you're using the rule of ten, like an easy strength thing, you could probably slide up to five days a week doing it if you have the courage to do light sets of 10, two days a week or something like that. Uh, if you're gonna do that push, pull, hinge, squat, load of carry, all five. You know, if you're like me and you kind of do a vertical, a vertical, uh, vertical press, uh, a pull up um, or hang, um, that uh, a hinge, a heavy, heavy hinge, kettlebell swings, and a suitcase carry, 
then that's then that's you can that's a little different than doing the squats and the pulls and everything specifically. Yeah, I like I like what you're saying here, Jeff, and I think there's some value to it, and I think you're on the right track. I, I hope that helps. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. We have a question from Muhammad, and Muhammad says, for a Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner who doesn't have a lot of time for strength training, also consider, considering the relatively high amount of stress put on the joints in the martial art, would you recommend the transformation program? Uh, that's one of my programs, three sets of eight, basically the Olympic lift generator. And the answer to Muhammad's question is no, with an asterisk. I know you probably hate it when people want to change the programs, which are the way that they are a good reason. And I'm sorry to ask this, but I per currently only have access to kettlebells and a pull-up bar. Is it possible to do something similar to the train? No. What? No, you can't do transformation program with the kettlebell. It's six whole body movements. It's the overhead squat, the front squat, the a, a big press, bench press military, power curl, clean grip snatch, and whip snatch. Um, all you're going to slide yourself into doing, Muhammad, is a, just a standard kettlebell program, which is fine. I don't know why you'd not want to. If so, how would you do it? I just told you you can't. And, and if not, if not, what other program would you recommend? Well, you know, Muhammad, the first thing, uh, you know, with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, uh, I mean, I'm not f as familiar as, as I should be, but any basic hard style training program would be fine. Um, if you know my work, uh, classic conditioning in 10, in 10 moves might be an idea. Uh, just any, any of the basic programs I put together would be fine. Again, I would toss out, try the workout generator. I mean, this is, I mean, I see, what I do when I work with, uh, fighters of any kind is we slide them on the easy strength, but you, you can't do that with your equipment, but, uh, you know, just make it simple as you can. I mean, with kettlebells, you've got the clean and press. That's going to take care of the push and the pull in a sense. Uh, you got the kettlebell swing, which is going to take care of just, just about everything. You got the goblet squat and that's a pretty good workout right there. If you just did goblet squats, clean and press and, uh, uh, swings, you know, do the goblet squats in the warm up. Um, grab the, grab the, grab the bell for one arm cleaner presses. I mean, I did the rite of passage passage workout uh, for a long time, um, you know, um, and mix in a pull up with it, clean and press. So it's clean and press left one, clean and press right one, one pull up, clean, clean and press two, two, two. Three, 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 four, 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 five, five, five. That would be five, what's called five rungs. Uh, if you did one, two, three, that's called three rungs. And then each ladder is so five ladders of one, two, three, one, two. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That would be five ladders of three rungs. Uh, you you have a heavy day, you have a medium day, you have a light day. Uh, mixed pull-ups in between with each one of those. So one, 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 two, two, two. And then at the end, you know, just roll the dice and whatever the number comes up with, that's how many swings you do. That's a pretty good program for you uh, with the equipment you have. I'd rather you do that than make up some crap program that you throw together on a piece of paper that's never been tried. This has been tried and it's true. So I hope that helps. Okay. Thank you. Joshua, I am 29 and recently married. I guess that uh, my invitation didn't make it. My wife comes from a family of physical therapists who are wary of most heavy weighted lifts. But my wife is curious and open to giving weightlifting a try. She is slight, five foot four and 110, yeah, and did little formal exercises beyond middle school, some of the usual swim, team, ballet, taekwondo, yeah. <laughs> same as me, swim, ballet, taekwondo, and soccer. Uh, for the last couple of years, she has been doing bar. Oh, that's uh, like a form of ballet. Okay. What would you recommend to get her started? Easy strength? No. Would you recommend deadlifts? Mm, hang on. At the beginning. Deads are my favorite, but I'm worried that preference and eagerness might cloud my judgment. Any insight into exercises and medium, barbell, dumbbell, kettlebell, etc. would be greatly appreciated. 
Oh boy, I tell you, women, uh, women and the kettlebell is a magical combination. Uh, with her background, my only knock on swimmers and ballet is that she might uh, have been taught to keep really loose joints. Uh, she's going to have to hard style goblet squats, hard style swing would be great. Uh, have her do some push-ups at first and uh, go there. There's your base. Uh, down the line, most of the women I've ever trained who've not done lifting fall in love with either the deadlift or the, uh, the, the back squat. It'll be fun to be on that uh that voyage with you. But yeah, I think it's a great idea. Don't get too complicated. Uh, make it simple. Um, and remember, most women, and it probably is very true in her case, struggle with overhead pressing, a pressing of any kind. So as soon as you get her pressing also, that would be good. Um, if you need a good workout for her to get used to it, uh, try the Humane Burpee. Uh, just type my name in online. Humane Burpee, Dan John. Um, that'd be a great one. If she can't do the 10 push-ups, just have her do push-up position planks. But we got to get that press up and that squat pattern built in. I hope that helps and it's going to be fun. And congratulations on your wedding. That's awesome. We have a question from a guy named Dan. Isn't that nice? Uh, I recently purchased my first home and watching you has inspired me to use my one car garage as a tool to build intentional community. <laughs> And, of course, get myself and, and others stronger. Any words of wisdom for someone who's never done anything like this before? I've never had a home gym that was attended by anyone else besides me, and, and I'm not a coach. Yet, what's funny, though, is, uh, yeah, have someone. <laughs> so, uh, you you offer the gym. And, you know, of course, rule number one, uh, there's two rules. Rule number one, nobody gets hurt. Rule number two, nobody gets hurt. Ha, 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 ha. If, you know, invite a few people over, have someone bring water, have somebody bring coffee, have somebody else bring sandwiches, have somebody else bring fruit, uh, whatever, and you get together and it's not, maybe one day a week at first, uh, pick a time, and it's not, you're not there to beat the living hell out of each other. You're there as a community to, to work on things. And you'll say very, you got to be very honest and candid. Um, my squat technique is bad or good. Please help me, you know, just do it like that. That's the thing. First, you got to come in with a humble heart. On danjohn.net, there's that free PDF, the Coyote Point Kettlebell Club or something like that. It's free. It's like 51 pages. And you'll see what we did, okay? If you can get yourself hooked up with a personal trainer who's smart and uh, uh, workable uh, or, or a coach who wants to get back in shape, that's good. Okay, you got a second question here. One very happy coincidence of me purchasing this home is that my mom, age 64, that is so young, is selling her house and moving in with me for a long time before getting her place again. She has expressed interest in strength training, but she's never been in the weight room. She is, however, in decent shape as she teaches yoga two to three times a day and walks several miles a day. Oh, that's very good. And has no significant injuries besides a nagging shoulder. I was planning on getting her on the workout generator and was wondering if there was anything I should look out for while training the movements with her or focus on on in particular. She cannot do a pull-up, and so that's one of her first goals. Uh, you know what? I mean, I, okay, A, you answer your own question. The workout generator. The workout generator. Yeah. Hanging. Uh, getting her to hang, especially from her yoga background. I always worry about people who do yoga, uh, yogurt, <laughs> yoga, a uh, little space balls moment there. Uh, yeah, anybody who does uh, uh, yoga is they learn to turn things off. Uh, the hang, uh, she won't be able to turn her grip off. She, there's no way to sneak around the, uh, the grip. Um, if you can get her to do hangs for a month and then flex her arms for a month, that might be all she needs. I, uh, both hangs. Uh, yeah, I love this idea. And uh, 64, huh? Still working out and doing yoga. It's inspiring. At my advanced years, it makes me uh, make me want to keep coming back for more. <laughs> uh, thank you. Good questions. Well, then that's it. Uh, that was episode 93 of the Dan John University podcast. Remember, if you have questions, 
email them to us at podcast at danjohnuniversity.com. As you can see, I answer a lot of questions. And don't forget, look at the YouTube channel for some of the questions I've already asked. And of course, if you're at danjohnuniversity.com, we have that wonderful forum where not only will I help you with your questions, but you'll get people who are in the trenches, just like you and me, trying to figure things out. Thank you, and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.